Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we will be, in the next half hour, going through portals for uh, business automation. So um, just a little bit of housekeeping. I will do my best to look at the questions and uh, any chats that you send to me. So feel free to in put in any questions as we're going through this, and I'll do my best to um, address them as we are going through it. And then uh, otherwise, you know, let us know if you have any questions and thanks everyone for joining. So again, portals for business automation. So we are gonna um, look at a various a few things. We're gonna have a few PowerPoint slides here just going through what we're talking about in regards to both portals and business automation. And all of this is on top of the Office 365 platform. And then from there, we'll go right into a demo and show you some functionality uh, and just examples of how this framework can be used for achieving business automation. So we'll go ahead and advance the slide and go into our agenda. So um, for our agenda today, we are gonna do a quick intro on who's dynamic point and what do we mean by business automation. From there, we're gonna go right into that demonstration, just discussing the overview or the foundation, if you will, of a portal application, as well as go through the various aspects of business automation that we wanna look at, um, both vendor onboarding, customer contract renewal, and then employee certification being the three examples that we'll show you today. Obviously, you could uh, take those in different fashions and apply them to different business processes. We're just showcasing those. And then in closing, just leave you with some further reading as well as some Q&A time. So again, feel free to go ahead and submit any questions as we're going through it. And I will do my best to uh, address them and pause uh, as we're going through it. So just a brief introduction of um, who Dynamic Point is. And I'm sorry, it's saying it's not sharing my screen. Let me go ahead and try to do that once again. Okay, hopefully you guys could see now. Um, so who is Dynamic Point? Um, so we are a software company uh, that is focused on extending the reach of various ERP and CRM systems using SharePoint applications. And SharePoint has taken on a very different um, flavor, if you will, within the past three years with the invention of Office 365. So what we used to do is develop these applications on top of SharePoint Server back in the day um, and deploy things on premise. And a lot has changed with that, namely with the invention of Office 365. So with that, um, we are very much um, redoing or have redone, I should say, all of our applications to be on that new framework. So that's been a big change for us. Um, but with that change, um, you can now uh, be assured that all of our technology is using the latest and greatest um, of what Microsoft offers. So we will keep going. Okay, what makes us different um, from a product uh, company? So what makes us different is that we are, you know, very much an app within this ecosystem. And I suppose the analogy I like to use here um, of, you know, how we are different is very similar to the analogy of an app that resides on a mobile phone. And if you think about an app that resides on the mobile phone, obviously that gets installed on your mobile device and it leverages all these various functions and features of the mobile platform. So when I install something on my phone, it asks me if I could use uh, such features as the camera, um, you know, as location services, things like that. Well, we do that same thing, but we do that within an Office 365 platform. So uh, same idea, but obviously we're on a business platform here as opposed to um, a mobile device or an iPhone or an Android. So what that means for us is we develop our products. They are deployed on top of SharePoint as an app. That app provides security branding to document management in the framework for our applications. From a workflow perspective, we're using a tool by the name of Power Automate, which also comes with this Office 365 suite. 
for mobile applications, we're using Power Apps, for gathering additional details, we're using Forms, and for reporting and analytics, we're using Power BI. So we're leveraging all of these tools that come with this Office 365 framework to make our products that much more powerful um, and ultimately functional um, at a fraction of the cost of developing all of this from scratch. So that's the benefit, if you will, of this ecosystem um, is that it's providing us all these functionality and, you know, obviously Microsoft is, um, most of our customers are already signed up on the Microsoft framework, so they have all these tools at their disposal already. So, you know, a huge, humongous advantage. Obviously, we've seen that similar uh, advantage in developing applications for uh, end users um, by using their mobile device. So if we were to carry on, So what makes a portal? A portal um, is really a lot of different things and it really depends on the use case of who it's targeting. So a portal can be geared towards various different people or different uh, end users, if you will. It could be a customer portal. If it is a customer portal, the things that I typically do is I manage company information, share contracts and agreements, do such things as order entry, inventory, payment processing and help desk. All of those, of course, are just examples, um, but you know, there's obviously different, uh, there's really no end to what a customer portal entails. If I do a vendor portal, again, I could do such things as manage, comp manage company information, publish terms and conditions, maybe collaborate on such things as purchase orders and payment status, as well as shipments. Again, just examples. If it's more of an internal facing uh, portal, such as an employee portal, in that case, you know, I'm gonna be more interested in employee uh, handbooks, as well as time entry, project management, maybe providing an insight to company operation, as well as reporting and analytics. So all of those are very much uh, options um, for the portal application. Of course, it depends on who that audience is um, that really you know, determines what functionality is the goal of a portal. And a portal is one of those things that it means different things to different people. It's one of those words that can be interpreted in very different fashions, depending on uh, what it is that your company does, not only from a um, business operations perspective, but again, who's that targeting and who that uh, end user of that portal will be. So business automation. Um, what do we mean by that? So a, a portal basically starts from the very you know, elementary aspect, if you will, on sharing, right? And the sharing of data, uh, hence the name portal. So at this very lower level, it's really about the sharing of data, um, as well as maybe such things as reports um, within your ERP or CRM system. So at the you know, quote unquote lowest level, that's um, you know, what a port is, portal is intended to do. If we start moving our way upstream, um, we could do such things as workflow, right? In addition to people seeing data that exists uh, within the system, we could also do such things as um, automate workflow. And then at the pinnacle, if you will, or the, you know, the highest level of leveraging a portal is business automation. And that's basically the idea of taking an entire business process and automating that using the portal. So. For at lower level, you know, we're starting off at just collaboration, if you will, sharing such things as data and reporting. And then as we make our way upstream, we are going to do such things as business automation and entire um, workflows, automating various business processes with little or no uh, human interaction. Obviously, there from an audit and an approval perspective, but the old, ultimate uh, business process is being driven by the portal's workflow. So to showcase that automation, we have a couple examples. First and foremost, we have a vendor onboarding process. So from a vendor onboarding process, what we plan on doing is walking through the steps of a vendor request. So this is the case of a vendor portal, obviously, because the audience would be a vendor as opposed to a customer. We're gonna take this new vendor request that's initiated uh, by an internal uh, admin, that we wanna do business with this new vendor. Um, we're gonna put in some specifics of who it is that we wanna do business with. 
we're going to invite that vendor to use our portal. So we're going to send them an invitation. As well as sending them an invitation, we are going to capture details, onboarding forms, um, tax documentation, etc. All the things that it requires to do business with us, we are going to send to that vendor. And then from there, we are going to invoke a workflow and approval of that vendor. So our uh, tasks will be assigned to managers and as such, such that they could review and approve that request. And then on the last step, we will automatically create that vendor in our ERP application. So that's the first example of business automation we wanna look at. So before we go into that, let's just first talk about that, what is a portal and what that means from a data collaboration perspective. So I have a couple examples. Here I have a customer portal. Again, this is an Office 365 based customer portal that we're sharing here. And I have links to such things as sales orders, creating new orders, looking at my invoices, maybe looking at the creation of new service cases if I want to do customer service um, directly with my customer from the portal, as well as doing such things as returns. They have the ability to manage their company information as well as their profile. Maybe contact us. Here you also see a um, reseller scorecard, which is basically a published Power BI report that I'm sharing um, with the customers who come in. This is obviously being filtered for those customers that are coming into the system. And then lastly, just some documents that I want to share, such things as maybe contract templates that are applicable to all customers, or I could filter these by customers as well as a news feed. So this basically represents the dashboard that the customers would come into to uh, collaborate with on the portal. If I were to click any of these items, what's gonna happen is the portal's going to make a live call to my ERP system and show all of the relevant data for that authenticated customer. So what's happening here is we're filtering this such that the customer is only seeing the information that is applicable for them. So these are the orders that this customer is concerned with, which they could of course drill into, maybe look at the details, maybe if I wanna publish shipping uh, information or allow them to look at line items. The other thing you notice, they could actually print various reports directly from the ERP application. So here they're gonna go ahead and print, of course, a sales report, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry an invoice, um, sales order, I apologize, showing the sales order in a PDF format. Reason we pick PDF here is because that could be rendered either from a mobile or a desktop, or you know, regardless of the platform, PDFs are uh, typically recognized and um, compatible with all the devices. So uh, that was just a simple read only. If I want to step it up a little bit, maybe I want to give my customers the ability to create orders. So in addition to seeing orders in the system, you, you can see now I have the ability to view and edit as well as submit it. You can put in such things as a reference number, a date associated to it, and create that order. You can see it did make a live call directly to the ERP application and defaulted all of the information for the uh, customer that is authenticated. And then I could go ahead and add line items directly to this as well. And we'll go ahead and create it. So as you can see, it's a simple uh, order entry process. It's not intended to be a, a e-commerce, you know, Amazon type experience, more of a B2B. I want to expose an order form uh, directly to my customers and give them the uh, freedom to enter these orders on their own leisure. Uh, but not doing it in a shopping cart type experience or a typical e-commerce. So that was an order entry. Um, we obviously have different things we could look at, but for the interest of time, I'm going to move forward to a vendor portal. Oops, I'm sorry, I closed my vendor portal. So let's go ahead and get back there. So vendor portal, obviously some similar to the customer portal, but as opposed to showing such things as sales orders, I'm gonna be collaborating on open purchase orders and things that are pertinent to vendors. So here I could see the various POs that are assigned to this vendor. 
I could edit various aspects, maybe change delivery dates, etc. Acknowledge the PO and then update it. So as we mentioned, you know, we're obviously showing the ability to collaborate upon data. Um, as I'm doing these various interactions, I'm also kicking off workflows associated to that. So you know, moving our way up to the um, value stream, if you will, you can see if I bring over my email here, I have such notifications as well as workflow of the interactions that I'm doing within the portal. So here you can see here's some values that I changed in the portal and the before and after value, as well as uh, just the details of the new order I submitted. So various options, obviously, as far as notifications and if I want to require approval um, for any of these items as well, I can most certainly do so. So that's just an introduction. What we wanted to talk about today um, was focusing on that business automation. So the first uh, process that I introduced was a vendor onboarding. So it makes sense to initiate this from the vendor portal. So I'm gonna click on a new vendor request. And what this is is a request that um, someone within my app, uh, system, or I'm sorry, my organization acting as an admin would be creating. So they'd be generating this request. Or maybe a manager or something like that saying, hey, I want to do business uh, with this new vendor. Here's vendor name and email. This is a simple form created using Microsoft Forms, but it's going to kick off our business automation process. So when I go ahead and submit this, what is going to happen is the first step is that vendor will be invited to do business with our company. So I, you can see here, I have a new email that just came in. And if I go ahead and bring this over such that we could see it, see what it's done. It's actually initiated a new contract to me um, using DocuSign. So, this is leveraging the DocuSign platform, which also offers integrations with Office 365. And if I click review this document, you can see here it's opened up a new vendor request using the DocuSign platform. So I have a pretty simple form here just asking such things as company information and address. I won't bore you with filling this out. Obviously, I'd fill this out. I could do such things as checklist and drop down what it is that I want to capture. But then the real point of interest, I suppose, is the capturing of document, uh, government forms and documentation. So here I have uh, the friend, the W9. So we could obviously fill that out. And one of the biggest advantages of doing this with the DocuSign platform is I could do electronic signatures. So I could clear my signature, I could change it as well as I could add new ones. So I could go ahead and draw my signature and replace it right in that document. So again, this has gone to the vendor after they have completed their part of this process and we'll hit finish. It's going to kick off a workflow. So as I mentioned, um, the next step in this is that it needs to be approved by a manager. So if I were to open up my Manage your email here and bring it over. You can see I have a new vendor request that's been submitted. So I have the ability to approve or reject this. If I click on the link here, it will open up the form, which is the form that was just completed. My vendor also got a copy of this, by the way. So they got the completed document back to them. So this is the form that the manager can now review as well as approve or reject the addition of this new vendor. So they could do this from email. If you guys are familiar with Teams or your company is using Teams, you could also do this from the Teams platform as well. Oops, so here's my Teams application. If I go ahead and bring that over, you can see here I have a new vendor request. Again, I could approve or reject it directly from here, as well as click on the link to the completed form. So we'll go ahead and finish this one from email just because that's where we started. So we'll say, sure, this looks great. Bob Vendor is approved and submit it. 
So now that the managerial review of that vendor is done, what is gonna happen next is my vendor will be invited back to the portal. So you can see here, I got a new email saying, welcome back, or welcome, I should say, to our company. We look forward to doing business with you. So I have a new email, pretty simple email. Obviously, I'd probably wanna brand this with more logos, make it look a little bit more professional, but for the sake of demo, I created a pretty simple one. You are now our vendor in our system. To access the portal, click on the following link. By clicking on that link, the vendor is now driven to the portal where they could look at their orders and submit invoices and do things like that. So as you could see, if I go ahead and bring back my PowerPoint, basically we took the vendor request initiated from someone within the organization. We sent that invitation to the vendor. They completed all the necessary documentation, including the W-9. And then we cooked off a managerial approval of that uh, new vendor, as well as automatically creating that vendor in our ERP. We're not gonna have time to go into the ERP integration, but by, by me accepting that, it actually did create that new vendor automatically, such that now I could you know, create POs and do the other various things that I wanna do with that vendor. So that was vendor onboarding. If we were to take this to more of a customer facing business process, how about contract renewal? So say I have contracts uh, open with my customers and I wanna do contract expiration and the notification when a contract is expiring, I wanna invite them to renew. And in addition to inviting them to the renew, I wanna send them a form capturing the details of uh, the renewal process as well as again, kick off a managerial approval and workflow. And then ultimately update that contract directly in the ERP. So same idea, again, I'm relying on information within the ERP application. Um, and I'm using both the portal as the framework as well as Office 365 workflow using Power Automate to monitor and drive this business automation process. So we will shift our gears out of the vendor portal and I'm gonna go into my customer job cost portal. So here's my job cost portal and here I have a contract summary. And it's showing the status of the various contracts that are assigned by me. As you can see, I haven't included the document per se, but I could obviously include the document. Here I'm just showing some highlights of it, such as the expiration date, the name, et cetera. If I dry, drill into any of these, you can see I'm just showing the completion, estimated completion date, the original contract amount. Of course, I could include you know, more details of the contract as well as links to the actual physical document as well. So we wanna renew this. So given that this is um, expired, it has kicked off a renewal request to me, the customer in this case. So again, if I bring up my email, I have a very simple email notification. Hello, sample customer. Your switch installation has expired. That was the name of the contract. So I'm just using a variable there. If you'd like to renew or any of our contracts, go ahead and click here. So similar to the vendor process, we are driving them to the portal. So here's their contracts within the portal. Here's the switch installation that I gave them. Um, notification was expiring. So we could go ahead and renew that. And what this is gonna kick off is a Power Automate workflow um, for the renewal. It's not as complex. I made this one pretty simple compared to the vendor onboarding, which included such things as the W9. I made this one even more straightforward. So the customer said, hey, thanks for uh, initiating this. Here's the form. So based on their request to renew, I automatically generated an email to them saying here's the link to the form. And what that has now opened up is a contract renewal form uh, that I created using Microsoft Forms. It's pretty simple. As you could see, how's your experience been with your existing contract? I could say that's been great. Uh, what would you like to do? Let's renew it. And then how long? And 
let's just pick a date, let's just say that we want to renew it. Maybe it's a short-term contract and we'll go ahead and renew it on uh, October 30th and then submit it. So, pretty um, simple form. Of course, I could add more fields there or make that as elaborate as I want. But if we remember that date, it should happen. So you can look here, it's 8.13. If I were to refresh this screen, we should get, and again, this is a live query of that ERP data. We can see now it's been updated to 10.30. So we've actually updated the ERP application with the new expiration date. And now we're showing that directly in the portal to the customer. So again, sort of similar to the vendor onboarding, same idea, uh, but different use case in that it's being applied to a customer renewal as opposed to a new vendor coming into my system. So, I mean, really what's behind this, there's the workflow, which is being leveraged by Microsoft Flow or Power Automate. And then there's also um, the form or, uh, you know, depending on the technology, in one case I used a DocuSign form, uh, in the other case I just used Microsoft form that I could create, right? And if you're not familiar with how to create these forms, they're pretty um, simple. So I could create, say we wanted to do an employee certification form or something like that. I could do employee certification, obviously add an image or something to it, add a few questions. How about this for an employee certification? Do you love working at Dynamic Point? That's what we're gonna ask. So we're gonna say sure. And uh, you know, this is a quiz, it's a certification exam, so we're gonna give it points. So we'll give five points to, if you answer yes, you love working at Dynamic Point. If you answer no, of course you're fired, uh, maybe make up your mind. We'll add about one more just for the fun of it. We will do a text. What do you like best about working here? Question. And of course the answer will be, oops, got it. You can see we could obviously make it required or not. And we'll leave that as a text option. So simple, you know, multiple choice as well as text. We'll keep it basic. And then we will go ahead and share this. And ultimately, this is what was generated in that email that I sent, right? So the email that I sent to the customer leveraged this URL, um, of which I'm not gonna build it into a workflow right now, but as you can see, it just presents them that certification. They can answer the questions, do all the other stuff, fill out any various answers. I like Mike the best, and then submit it, and then immediately get their results. So if I were to do this in a serious fashion, as opposed to just my simple example, I could make this a complete test, give them you know, questions and answers and rate them based on their certification exam and obviously give them immediate results and then kick off such things as approval and workflow and maybe a recertification process based on the results of this. So simple example, but hopefully through, you know, looking at the uh, vendor onboarding as well as the contract renewal, you could see the power and what that could become if I were to uh, take that example and continue to build it out. So that was the contract renewal. Um, further reading on this topic. So, you know, this whole platform that we're leveraging, this Office 365 platform and using it for portals and collaboration is by no means uh, anything I could take credit for. Uh, the idea of developing, this is very much something being introduced by Microsoft as well as their platform that comes with Office 365 and various tools. So I will send this um, document out after this webinar, but there's various links to further reading, reading as well as information on our site that you could leverage. 
and learn more about these topics as well as the various tools that are available for building them. And that concludes our webinar. So I, it looks like I am at time. I thank everyone very much for joining and wish everyone a great rest of your week, uh, as well as staying safe and stay healthy. Thank you everyone for, for your time and we will uh, follow up with an email with the contents of what was provided today. Thank you so much, bye now.